This is Gateway City Sports. It's a trap! Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? This is the Team of Rivals podcast. Everything you want to hear from the big sports to the big screen. He's all by himself, fires into the end zone. Touch! Touchdown! No! Vaughn into the windup in his first offering. Just a bit outside. He tried the corner of this. He doesn't like you. I don't like you either. Time winding down, Mike over three. Yeah, 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 yeah. She is gone. I can't believe what I just saw. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. You believe in miracles? You may fire when ready. What? Good evening, Cubs and Cardinals fans. It's Thursday, February 3rd. Groundhog saw a shadow yesterday. I think that's what it was. Anyway. This is the Team Arrivals podcast, proud members of the Gateway City Sports Network, where you can find great podcasts and blog content. You can follow us online at TeamArrivalsPodcast.com. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Rumble at Team Arrivals Podcast, and we're on Twitter and Getter at Team Arrivals Pod. And for those of you watching us live, please hit the like and subscribe button. So why don't you right now, right now, I see you there. I see you watching. Hit the like button. I'm waiting here until you hit the like button. Do it. Come on, don't just lurk. Hit the like button. There are three of you I'm waiting for three likes. We're not, we are not going anywhere until we get those likes. I'll wait all night. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh we can God. get started now. <laughs> See, that's what being a dad does for you. Be sure to ring that bell on YouTube and Rumble so that you can receive notifications anytime we post new content. Joining me for tonight's show, co-founder of TOR and number 104 in the 2021 edition of the Top Cards on Twitter, Ron Nuttall, permanent occasional guest host with a lot of distractions in the background, Elliot Dewey, and a special guest tonight, noted sports ball aficionado and uh, completing the super quadrant of the of tonight's divorce cast, oh. Ron's brother, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that specifically what he said not to mention tonight? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Welcome to Sports Ball, everybody. <laughs> it is pretty amazing. I mean, we have to have one of the, out of the, all of the thousands of podcasts that are out there. Like, it is probably a rarity that you have four. I mean, there may be a divorce cast or a. a, a, a formerly oh, married man be. cast or something like that that has but there are four guys on right now that had no intention of being divorced what pete five six years ago like we were all good elliot i mean we were all like well elliot we gotta go back goes, a little bit further, oh, yeah. a little further yeah. but T- 10 <laughs> yeah. 11 yeah 11. 10 years ago i think we were all good right <laughs> 10 years ago we were we no. were something let's just put let's just leave it right there yeah yes yeah. yes all right <laughs> This is not the way I wanted this to start. Okay, keep going, Pete. You're doing great so far. Thank you. Son I'm of a glad bitch. That I'm the, also the only one on screen. I, there's just a lot of voices. There's a reason why I haven't put any of us on screen yet because we're all shaking our heads. <laughs> so tonight we warned you about it on the socials. We're going to get there eventually. So, uh, you know, yes. If Scott isn't an indicator that we're going to nerd out tonight, I don't know what else is um, because he's certainly not going to be able to carry the way talking about baseball the way that Holy L could. So, Oh, don't uh, worry. Don't but, worry. In the middle of our baseball talk, I'm going to pull his screen up. He's not going to be paying attention. He's going to be playing. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, so we're going to get to that right now. Um, not a whole heck of a lot in baseball. Um, we're well on our way towards Ron just deleting his uh, Twitter account. We are. I'm not sure what Elliot was. We are T minus nine days, Pete. We are T minus nine days to uh, T O R underscore Ron seven five deletion. You know what I think we're going to have to do? I think we're going to have to come up with a new opening. It's going to be like uh, Nightline during. Oh, you guys probably don't remember this. Uh, what was it? Nineteen seventy nine. Were you even alive, Ron? Yes. Seventy nine. Yeah, I was. I'm sure you don't remember it. Elliot was winning his first state championship, 79. 1979, they took the uh, the, the uh, Iranian hostages in the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, mm-hmm. and that was where uh, Nightline essentially was launched. It was just a, a late-night show to catch everybody up on the latest developments, and it eventually evolved into And it, it eventually involves in, involved, evolved into Tucker Carlson. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, because Tucker Carlson is kind of the second coming of Ted Koppel. I wasn't but, even, I, but before I, Nightline second got Second coming launched, of Ted Koppel. You just <laughs> diminished that man's whole existence by comparing him to Tucker. It's fine, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, he deserves it. Anyway, and so he started it out with day one of America held hostage. Mm-hmm. America under gonna siege. To, we're going to have to bring that back. We're going to have to do some research on that, Ron, and cut that into a new launch um, because... February 13th will be day one of America held hostage. QR underscore Ron seven five Twitter account. It's, it's uh, I, I, I thought I, I told you, uh, I think we, we, we chatted just briefly earlier and I th- really thought Elliot a month ago when I, I, I thought I was lobbing out an idle threat. I thought no way they're going to let a, a, a baseball interruption happen again for the, like the third, fourth year in a row after all the other interruptions we've had that, haven't been baseball related, but they've been like society related, like world related. I didn't think right. they'd be dumb enough to let this happen again. So I thought I was totally throwing out a soft threat. Like there's no way. And now nope. we're nine days away from me having to delete my Twitter account, which I've worked so hard to get those 475 followers. Um, I mean, I've got to start taking nudes. Otherwise, I'm never going to get over a thousand. I don't know that it, that's going to move you up the, on the top the cards on way. Twitter, though. I don't care about the top cards on Twitter. <laughs> I mean, that might move you even further down. <laughs> It's right. As far as baseball fans, I would lose like half of them like instantly, but I would gain, (laughs) I would gain a bunch of like periphery, like shitheads and I would just eclipse, you know, what I've ever been able to achieve being honest. So whatever. Um, Hey Ron, can you come down to the HR office, please? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I know just a bunch of stress. Uh, It might, I might feel good for like a week. Like, Oh God, look at all these followers. And then, yeah, I, I would get that call. I would get that email. Hey, can you call us? We're disabling your laptop. (laughs) <laughs> and, that's fine. and can you please bring it in we're going to degauss that thing so that there is no evidence of these right. whatsoever actually we're just going to throw it in this this smelting pot and just get rid of it along with your college computer here we go we're throwing that in there too we don't even want to know what's on that thing um you've been hanging around back too much we just need to we need to bleach bit everything that you've ever, every piece of technology that has ever you need to bleach you. your, just bleach your corneas. I mean, just all of it. <laughs> all right. Uh, baseball, Pete, Pete, you had some news, like uh, something happened today. Like baseball actually reached out for an arbiter to, to like get things moving, to get, get, get some kind of motion going in some direction, whether it's favorable or not to whatever party, like something happened today where they were, they were trying to make some traction. Fill us in. Yeah. I think it's a bad sign personally. Um, Major League Baseball, uh, they were supposed to be returning uh, with a counterproposal for the players in the negotiations. Uh, and the uh, and instead, the response was that they've reached out to the NLRB and they're asking for a mediator to step in. Um, the last time that a mediator got involved, the wonderful 1994 player strike. So, oh, good times that. ahead. Uh, you know, yeah especially because mediators don't get involved to come up with solutions, or at least that's not what they're supposed to do. Right. They're supposed to settle supposed dispute, to help with the conversation. Right? They're supposed to, you know, bring down the temperature. Yeah. Which if the temperature is high, we're not hearing much about it. And we definitely heard about it in 94 and there was no social media. So I, I don't know. I think that this is a really bad sign that instead of putting another counter proposal out, the owners just went. And, and what I think that means is that the owners couldn't agree on a counter proposal that there was a faction that that was coming up with something that was a significant move towards the players and i don't know if it's a majority but enough of the owners said nope we are not putting that on the table they couldn't come to an agreement 
And so now here we are. What do you uh, think? Do you think by if they're asking for a mediator now? There is no way that Ron is going to have a Twitter account in ten days. That's fine. I'll have our I'll have our tour. Um, that's all I need, Pete. I only need us. I don't need me. Um, I know that that warms your heart. Um, I actually don't give a fuck about social media. I haven't for a long time. I, I I do not walk around with my phone glued in my palm all day, tweeting out every thought I have. And that's what you've got to do to get thousands of followers. You have to literally tweet out every thought you have every second of the day. You have to say outlandish shit and you have to be funny. Or you actually have to be an interesting character and actually do something that, that um, benefits people. And, I, and I'll tell you what, uh, uh, a friend we have, Elle, who was just on last week, she actually uh, does shit on Twitter that actually benefits people, and she has she 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 has uh, star power as far as and she would hate us for saying this. She hate me for saying this, but she actually brings people a benefit, and she's actually a, an enjoyable, entertaining watch. She doesn't have to say outlandish shit. Me to get uh, a thousand followers, I would have to be extreme every day. I have to carry well, my phone you, with me. And... You know why she doesn't have to say outlandish shit, and you do? No. Boobs. Oh, well, she would tell you, she would tell, yes. And of course, uh, I remember a, a famous quote. It was, I had her and Buffa on. You guys weren't on that week. Just her and Buffa. And she said, how do you get guys interested in five pounds of fat? Throw a nipple on it. That was her, that was her answer to it. So she would probably agree with you on that. But uh, um, no, I, I'm, I'm not that interesting. I'm, I, I'm just a fanboy like all, all the rest. And so I'd have to do extreme shit in order to get followers. And I'm not... I'm not capable of doing that. I don't have the time. I've got a house full of kids. So, ain't happening. Ain't happening, man. Um, Pete, I, I think that by baseball reaching out for help for a, a mediator, I don't think this is going to work in their favor. I just have a feeling it's not going to. But what do you think? Elliot, this is bouncing to you. You haven't chimed in on this yet. But, like, there's no traction. The, the, the Players Association is not going to counter... Major League Baseball is not going to counter their their last offer. They're reaching out for a mediation. I, I just don't see this working in baseball's favor. No, it's not good. When I when I heard that they were bringing in a mediator, I just I just sighed. I was like, this is it's not going to end well for MLB because if if the owners are in fighting and can't come to an agreement on a counter proposal to the players then then it becomes a three-way war between these guys or a three-way argument. And it's just going to be a bunch of people trying to yell over each other. That's probably why they're bringing the mediator in. And this is probably going to eat in, I would say, at least spring training. See, this is where I want to throw it to Scott and say, Scott, who doesn't love a three-way? Oh, no. Not this guy. <laughs> he's not gonna say that out loud <laughs> so yeah this we are fastly the shittiest podcast we've done so far Go ahead. Not having base. it was funny because i had the boy over here earlier tonight and uh, and he was asking if we were doing the podcast. And he said, what are you guys going to talk about tonight? And I said, well, we'll probably talk about baseball a little bit, but there's not a lot to talk about um, because they're on strike. And I kind of explained to him where everything stood. And he said, so like a 20-minute podcast? I said, yeah, that sounds about right, except then we're going to talk about Book of Boba Fett. He said, oh, okay, you're going to be up all night. Well, well, we, yeah, we, we, we could be. Baseball. We could be. Well, let's, let's, let's tie a bow on this. I mean, you know, we got to at least give some kind of closure to the um, – the baseball portion of this, I think, right? Um, well, I got another baseball thing that we get to talk about. Go ahead, Frank. Let's, let's. Well, sure. Um, you know, one of our favorite projection systems, Ron. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not Pakoda. They haven't come out with theirs yet. I think that was the that was the. Oh, what a relief! Okay, that was early on. Uh, I, I think the uh, the title of that episode was something like Pakoda Poo Poo. Uh, Ron was not happy with the Pakoda Respect, projection. Prospectus Poo Poo. That's what it was. Oh, that's it. Was it prospectus? I thought it was. Uh, it might have been. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it, all, that all that matters is that Ron was not on board. And it was in our very first year. Ron was not on board. With and the and they were wrong. The they were wrong, people. They weren't as wrong as what I claimed they would be. Right. They were close. Right. They were close. <laughs> well, well, here's another one. And um, yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't personally 
pick any nits with it, but I'm hoping that, that it'll get under Elliot's skin and he will. Uh, Zips came out with their projections for the NL this week. Uh, and for specifically for the NL central, they've got the cards and the brewers basically in a tie. Um, they've got them a game apart. Ooh. Okay. And then they've got the Cubs in fourth place, 13 oh. and a half games back. Who? Well, so the Reds are in between. I th- I feel the Reds like are in. They, they project the Reds to be in third. I think it was eight games back, if I remember correctly. Okay. Elliot, how are you feeling about that? Hold on. Let, let me isolate him. It's about right. <laughs> Shit. Do, do you want me to say, oh, this is bullshit? <laughs> I thought. They're yeah, we not thought going to be that far behind. We we, we threw um, it to you. We like, thought it was going to be a lot more than that, but okay. No, I I mean at this point, yeah, that's about right. That's probably where they will be. So if not as bad as last year, it's an improvement. Um, Would you put any money so we'll on see. that? Would you put any money on that, Elliot? Would you like if somebody said, "Hey, the Cubs are going to finish fourth. You have to bet your house on it." Well, right now, I don't have that to bet. <laughs> so okay, then you would not make that bet. Go for it. That's right. <laughs> I will I will bet this house that I live on or live in that uh Cubs will probably end up in I don't like I don't like betting on things. I like to have protection, so we all know how important it is to stay protected. Sometimes life throws you a curve, and that's why you need Allstate. They offer home, auto, boat. Hang on. Motorcycle business, life insurance, investments, and so much more. They offer a customized approach that's unique to your situation to make sure you, your family, and assets are properly protected. They also offer great rates and savings. Give Sean and his team a call today at 636-764-6294, and they'll help you with an insurance quote right over the phone. You can give them a call talk about sports. They do that, too. We all have busy lives, so you can email Sean at seanwiley at allstate.com and talk to him about your coverage options. And remember, you're in good hands with Allstate. Ron, imagine how much different life would be if you'd had a little bit more protection. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Ah, such a... I would say this. I I, I think this is is a better uh, clip, Pete. Uh, I'll just go ahead and... What a stupid son of a bitch. (laughs) <laughs> Duh, i finally taught the crack 50 yeah all right all right uh okay uh baseball is depressing i mean it all is i mean everything we talk about when we talk about baseball is is it's just been it's not been fun guys i've been beating the drum on this for years i'm threatening to throw away my twitter account which i've worked so hard I'm glad for. you guys are coming around to my side what's that throwing away our twitter accounts or giving up on sports ball entirely we're, we're, we're like going to give up on sports ball for the, uh, we've only spent about 20 minutes of this uh, show so far talking about that's sports. That's how long my, my son thought we were going to last talking about baseball. So exactly. Yeah, well, right. your, your son has good intu- intuition and he's right because there's not that much and there's not that much to be uh, hopeful for. And, um, you know, point. I hope that, look, I don't know who I side with here more guys. It's almost impossible to determine like who, who's, who's more in the right, who's more in the wrong. It's like every other labor dispute they've ever had. Like we're pissed off at both sides, and the state of the game, the popularity of the game, um, is waning. It's not the most popular game. I mean, when you find playoff games on TBS, hey, look, shit, man, writing's on the wall. Like you're, you're not, you're not, you're not all that. Fox won't even pick you up until you're in the World Series. So, um, or unless you're in the American League Championship Series, like NL Championship Series, Fox hasn't carried that for like what a decade. Like they leave that up yeah, to. I- Perfect example of that. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, wasn't the NLCS when the Cubs uh, made their run to the World Series? Wasn't that on TBS? Who knows? P- I don't know. I mean, it's just like I think it was. Like you have to like the fact that you have to hunt for uh, league championship series in baseball, and you can't just find it on major networks. Is like, like what the hell? What the hell's baseball become? Like what? What are they doing? Um, they've got a lot of. It's, they, they got a lot of housekeeping before they start worrying about rule changes and everything else. So, uh, mm, I, no, I think on, honestly, Ron, I think part of the reason why they've been focusing on rule changes is because then they don't have to talk about the big stuff, right? If they can put stuff on yeah. the table that they can all agree on, that's, that's an easy win. 
so that they feel like they're getting something done, like the DH uh, or a bonus pool for minor leaguers. Now, they haven't been able to agree on the amount, but they can agree on the bonus pool. Yeah. Um, the fact that they can agree on there being a draft lottery. Again, they can't agree on how many of the first three or eight picks are going to be part of the lottery, but they can agree that there's going to be a lottery. You know, if they can do all of that, they can be, like, oh, well, we're making progress. But no, you're not, because you're not talking about the core economic issues. And ultimately, that's what's going to doom this whole thing. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, we are done about this. I, I don't want to talk about baseball anymore. It's all depressing. Uh, bears. Bears of the Bears. Uh, any thoughts on the Bears? Okay, good. I'm glad we don't. Uh, let's go to something fun. Uh, Pete, I want, you, I want you to take this one away. Um, you know my thoughts on how this... Oh, shit. We got another guest joining us. Pete, just take it away. Take it away. We're talking about Star Wars, talking about the Book of Boba. Go. You want to talk, You want to piss in our cornflakes. Is that, is that how you want me to take it away? No, I just we have another, another soul joining <laughs> us on the show. So, How's it going, Braden? He's not there yet. We were waiting. He's about to. You go ahead. Take it away. Uh, take it away. Episode six. We've got one left. I still maintain, as I did when uh, you and Ellen and I jumped on, uh, I don't think we're going to get the conclusion of this battle. If we get the battle next week, I would be surprised. Um, but I fully expect the battle with the Pikes to not be concluded at the end of next week's episode. Um, this is something that's going to carry. I mean, look at we've clearly already started season three of the Mandalorian. And I kind of wonder if this isn't all part of a larger story and that really book of Boba Fett is just <clears throat> season 2.5 of the Mandalorian. And it's not its own story. We, we essentially got four episodes of four. Yeah. Four episodes of Boba Fett's backstory, right? We got, we, we had a little diversion letting us know how Boba Fett got to where he is now. And now we're going back to our main storyline. Yeah, and so uh, all the people who have made the jokes about uh, about you know Boba Fett forgetting that he needed to be in his own series, no, I have a feeling that this was planned all along. Uh, well, yeah, it, it had to be planned, right? I mean, how how this is all rolled right. out. And I was, and I know, I, I if I could go back and listen to our uh, show last weekend, um, you know, I thought there's no way. Like, okay, Mando said he wanted to go back and and see Grogu again. Um, like that, uh, they're not gonna they're gonna do the Luke Skywalker thing this in in the middle of book book of Boba Fett like as it's wrapping up they're not gonna do that like that's gonna be something that's visited in Mando season three I I, I firmly thought that and like I was I was I was surprised I'm like oh, shit here no, but we go you were right you were right we're in Mando season three <laughs> we are we didn't know we are but we are right uh, yeah. um, in the middle of Book of Boba Fett without it being announced. Um, These last two episodes have been Mandalorian episodes. This this episode six yeah. was, so, sorry, chapter six was so much of a Mando episode that Boba Fett showed up. He was on screen for a minute and he didn't say a word. So kind of a throwback to the original Boba Fett character anyway from Empire Strikes Back, right. but still. <laughs> they finally figured it out after four episodes. Like he shouldn't talk. So the next right. two episodes, they didn't make him talk. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, there there are a lot of good things uh, about what I saw yesterday um, that I was really like thrown thrown by. But I want to kick it over to my brother, who's had to sit here for like half an hour, listen to us talk about baseball without giving Small away <laughs> without without giving it away to the end, Scott. I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll share the screen with you at this point. Um, yeah. So. The series so far, go ahead and throw your thoughts about it because I, I've had mixed feelings, um, even though I've been surprised and, and pleasantly surprised over the last couple of weeks. But what do you think? Um, up until the last two episodes, I just didn't. It, it's kind of like it's kind of like solo. Um, I don't hate it, but I, I don't see why it's necessary. Uh I don't see why it exists. Uh, I mean, there's like a lot of backstory on Boba Fett that I don't really care. And I don't think a lot of people care. Um, okay. But yeah, these last two episodes, uh, since it's led into Mandalorian season three, like great. I like that. This is great. It's, it's, it's much better. Um, I don't know. There's just, uh, Boba Fett was such a cool character. And I, I, I don't know. There's just like stripped all the mystery of, from him so i don't know yeah i'm just I mean and, and so Pete, far it just seems like a huge letdown 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, Pete, that's that was I think the thing I was talking about last weekend, right? Like, I, I, I always, for like two decades, all of us have been able to enjoy like this mystery character. Like, we only heard a few lines, mysterious, but he looked really cool. But now we're getting, uh, we're getting a backstory. We're getting like the details filled in. And and do you feel satisfied with, with who you saw in nineteen eighty? You know, I kind of wonder, I, I was thinking about that after we were on with Al on Sunday. Um, and it crossed my mind at some point this week. You know, I wonder if part of the reason why people aren't so disappointed with it. I, and Scott, I absolutely agree with you when we talked about it on Sunday. Um, it was a mistake they made with Solo. And it's, and it's something that we're seeing here. You can go ahead and you can tell us why Han made the castle run in less than 12 parsecs. And you can even briefly show it. And you can show us how he and Chewie met, and you can show us how he won the Millennium Falcon. We don't need a two-hour movie spending a half hour on each of those storylines. We don't need to go into that kind of detail. And they've kind of made that mistake again with Boba Fett. Um, but to get back to the point, I, I was kind of thinking about it this week, Ron, and I thought, you know, maybe part of the reason why people are having such problems uh, with the story that they've been telling in the book of Boba Fett, specifically the story about Boba Fett, is that it runs counter to the story that we've been telling in our minds for 40 years, mm -hmm. right? We made up, I mean, yes, there were comics and there were books and stuff that Boba Fett was in, but we made up this whole story about this character who we heard very few lines from right. in between the years of 1980 and 1983. And so all of a sudden we had concocted this backstory of this, of this very taciturn um, feared bounty hunter. And maybe that wasn't the story all along. Well, it but because no, it doesn't because it doesn't though. jibe with the story that we made up. No, it wasn't. I mean, we it. saw we saw a mysterious character in 1980, and we saw him again in 1983. Yeah. You know, when these movies were spaced out through years, like they were in the prequels, and not every detail of their existence had to be explained. Like your your imagination could kind of run wild. Like you, we always wondered what Han Solo's life was like before we ever saw him in a new hope. Like he was wild, you know, he, 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 he fell on hard times. You heard rumors that he, he was an Imperial pilot, but you know, he was, um, he, he, um, uh, you know, uh, went AWOL with the empire and became a smuggler. Um, that kind of stuff is like to let people's imaginations run wild. is kind of fun. Um, to, to need to explain every second of it. I don't know. It, it, it does strip away some of the mystery. And, and with Boba Fett, it does that too. Um, but I will say this, like it didn't start with this, with this series. I mean, guys, it started with um, Clone Wars and they, with, with uh, Attack of the Clones. I mean, they started stripping it away slowly. So it wasn't, I'm not going to blame it on this series here because this is only telling Boba Fett's story from when he got dumped in the Sarlacc pit to today. It's just not telling that gap between uh, you know, when his uh, donor, as bo -Katan put it, or his father died and, and when he came, I mean, Clone Wars is already starting to fill in that gap. So I don't blame the series for that. Um, but his transformation, at least they had some kind of explanation with the Tusken Raiders for why his perspective on life and the world changed, right? When he, he was actually taken in by... Not not yeah. cloners, or not somebody that needed something from him, or not somebody that was going to pay him money. It was a culture. It was a people who who accepted him as one of their own. So his his perspective on things have changed. Um, that's that's kind of the twist here, Pete, and that's that's the difference, and that's why I I, I don't you know initially I was like I don't need this, but yeah, it's they've made it a little different now. Have I been disappointed post Tuscan? Boba, a little bit. But the story's not done being told. It's not done. And that's why I've, I've in, in all fairness, I'll wait till this last episode rolls out. I know he's not spoken a word in two weeks, but you know what? We got something that uh, none of us thought we really wanted, but we got. Um, I'm not going to complain at all. Um, and Ron, I wouldn't get your hopes up that the story is going to be con completed next third next I Wednesday know. night. It's not going to. I don't I don't believe it will. No. Well, this series was supposed to be 10 episodes in the first place and then because of the last 2 years it got cut. So, um 
that's why we're only getting the seven episodes. So I think you're right, Pete. I don't think we get a conclusion to this until the the second part of this book. So, but we so have maybe uh, those three episodes that got cut didn't actually get I, cut. Maybe they got shoved in, and they're the first three episodes of Mando. We have shut out. Uh, some somebody's waiting <laughs> on the line here, so I want to wait. And, and Braden, don't spoil anything. We haven't got to the end of this episode yet, nor the middle. But at least just just the general sense of the the book of Boba Fett. Now that we've had a couple. We've had a couple episodes here where it hasn't been focused on the Boba Fett story. I feel like his book of Boba Fett has been told episodes or chapters one through four, not necessarily five and six, but something's coming in seven that we don't expect yet. So um, I know you have strong opinions on this. I'm surprised you've so I have not had you on mute. You've shown an immense amount of restraint. So go ahead. Yeah, I put myself on mute. Um, I've, I've learned how to do that over the years. You know, or over the month, I've been getting better at that. You know, uh, <laughs> instead of coughing into the mic, you know, I've, I've grown from that. You've, gr- you've grown know. from coughing into the mic and making noises that we don't want you to make. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So, but so here's, the, here's the thing about both that I thought they uh, inserted him perfectly in the Mando season two. Um, I thought that was cool, whatnot. When he blasted off into the ship, I was like, oh, I wonder where he was going. But then immediately after that, I was back into Mando season two finale. Um, so even if we wouldn't have got, you know, post credit scene or, or Boba show, I probably like maybe in a couple months would have been like, oh, I wonder where Boba's at. You know, Boba's cool. I want something from him. But I don't think it would have been the number one thing on my mind. Um, I, I agree that what made Boba great was uh, the mystery part of him. But yet again, I feel like if they didn't give us a, a show, we'd be like, oh, Boba, Boba's so cool. Like, what the heck? They just wasted him. You know how people kind of thought back then it was the return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um, so I almost wish they would have kept more mystery. And if they were going to do a show, maybe do it differently. The thing about this show that makes it weird is I like his aspect on life with the Tuscans, but I also almost wish, you know, that he was just wanted to beat up everyone and kill everyone and was kind of no feeling and yeah. maybe would have been like a more cooler show. Like I roll with respect. Well, I mean, like, I, and, and I said this, it. I said this over the weekend, Braden, I'm like, I think one of the things that, you know, none of us were able to see in live action. Um, and Pete, I, we, we, we talked about this over the weekend, like in live action, we never got to see Boba Fett, like chase down a quarry. Like we got to see Mandalorian, right? Does that cold, cold blooded, like gotcha. going to freeze your ass in carbonite on my ship and take you in, you know? And then we got to see that with the Mandalorian, like walks up to his quarry says, I'm going to take you in hot or I can take you in cold. Like we never got to see Boba Fett actually do that. We we always we thought it in our heads, like in our own our own mind. Like we 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 probably saw this playing out for years. Um, but I don't know. I mean, the the post Sarlacc pit Boba Fett. Like we're seeing a much different version of this. We're seeing one that was we learned about a Tuscan culture that none of us were asking for six months ago, but we got it. Um, and so it's, well, it's just, just a, after the tech and stuff, he doesn't have much of a storyline. Like I don't really well, know. I mean, but what but, to do with him. but the thing is, like everybody has has some kind of event in their life that transforms them. It, it changes them and it changes their perspective. It gives them a new thing. Like think about Boba Fett, right? Clone. Um, your clone donor father slash dies. You're you're on your own. You're you're fending for yourself. And all of a sudden, you get this tribe of people who have nothing to gain by bringing you in. Nothing. But they bring you in and they make you one of their own. So for the first time in his existence, he's actually brought in and made a part of something that they had nothing to gain by bringing him in. Right, Pete? I mean, it was, it's probably a transformative period in his life, um, in his existence that uh, changed his mind and changed his perspective, which is why he's, instead of going back and just shooting Bib Fortuna, he had a reason for doing it. And Ron, that's an excellent point. Um, and it was driven home in the first four episodes. We saw Django leave Camino what three times in flashback. I think yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I think there were three of those shots, right? And then we got, uh, I think it was <clears throat> two shots of him of, of uh, Boba holding his father's helmet. Right. Um, 
So, so that was clearly a, a traumatic and formative experience in his life. So you're right. So it, it has been bookended and I, and that would be the one thing that I would say is that, and look, you talked about it on Sunday. We have learned from Dave Filoni that you never give up on a storyline, no matter how inconsequential and frustrating it may be. Filoni, unlike JJ Abrams will tie up the knots. He will oh, tie up the loose. Ends. Please do not exclude Rian Johnson from that. Um, Rian. Ryan. What? Oh. Yeah. No, but I, I, I'm not I, I'm not ready to give up on Boba Fett's storyline because I don't think that it's done. And I don't think that he's going to end up being a minor character in this Filoni Favreau-verse. I think, I think that there's a good chance that what we discussed on Sunday... Yeah, I do too. I know happen. where you're going. I think, yep. that, I think that we may see Boba become the one who's wielding the Darksaber at the end of this arc. Yep, I do too. I mean, I, and I, I think that the I think that the agent for that was introduced towards the end of this episode. And I tell you what, I don't want to jump, but at the beginning of episode six, we saw Cobb Vanth return, right? And and Timothy Oliphant, the actor. I, I, you know, we've all seen Deadwood, at least parts of it. Um, he's playing he's playing the same character um, as as he did in Deadwood, but uh, yeah. he's a great character. Um, uh, I, I love seeing him. Back. I, I expected we would see him back in either the Mandalorian. I didn't. I didn't know if it'd be Boba Fett or not, but we got him. Um, oh, uh, you had to know we were going to see him again in some capacity once we once we ended up on well, Tatooine. In the last episode, uh, you know, uh, Mando said, "Hey, I can help you out with that." I clearly expected him to go recruit Cobb Vanth. Yep. Um, yeah, you didn't think it was going to be the Jawas that were going to step up to the plate. I think the Jawas are going to step up. I don't think that that flyby and they're acknowledging him flying by was just window dressing. I think the Jawas are going to show up and be a part of this thing, man. With that big great. ass mm. crate dragon skull on it. My son loved that, man. <laughs> big old crate dragon skull like it's some insane hood ornament on there. <laughs> right? That's telling all the other Jawas, you got nothing on us. <laughs> Yeah, you may have knocked over C three PO, but we killed a crate dragon. Um, all they need is lifts. So we we uh, yeah. let's keep going through the episode here. So we we saw Cobb Vanth in the beginning. Um, I, was, I was actually you know glad <laughs> to see him, but then we got uh, we got Mando uh, landing on. I don't know what the planet is, but it was Luke Skywalker was clearly there. Um, as soon as he landed, I don't know if Luke Skywalker left. Uh, you know, the Mando, a business card when he, when he picked up Grogu at the end of season two, but you know, somehow uh, Mando knew what planet they were on and, and arrived there and, uh, met R2. And we saw the little, uh, like ant bots, uh, making a temple or laying, laying the stones down to make a temple or whatever. But I don't, okay. That's a small detail. I'm sure that was the same. Which temple. I read that was the same temple. That was a it, yeah, the, yeah, I guess that's the same temple going. that uh, Luke was training, um, like the Knights of Ren burn it down and all that. It's the same yes. temple. Okay, so. so according to Wikipedia, Luke's temple was founded on Yavin. <clears throat> so that would have been Yavin. That's, that's what I was wondering if it was, was Yavin. Really Yavin? It, very, it very much looked like, very similar. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, and and um, Ron, come on. He's a bounty hunter. He doesn't need a business card. Yeah, you're right. You think, you're right. You, you think that he doesn't have um, Grogu's <laughs> chain code or whatever program in, right? He he had that he had that tracker for the whole the entire first yes, episode. Fine, fine. I, I'll, of the yeah. Mandalorian. I he can see Grogu. I can see. Okay, I can see. He can. He can. And, and and it actually is backed up because when he got on, he was flying over. He was just flying over, and his scopes were completely dead. And then all of a sudden, there was a beep, and there was a red dot moving on the scope. All right, fine. So, but we saw, as soon as he landed, we saw R2. We saw the droids, like, you know, carrying stones, building the temple. I kind of I kind of knew where that was going. That was That's Luke's temple. That's likely the same uh, structure or structures that uh, show up in the uh, sequel trilogy that Kylo Ren destroys, right? Um, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we got to see that part. That was That was great. Then R2 shuts down, which is kind of curious. Like, was he trying to just conserve power? Was he recharging? Was there a, like, 
you know, magnet recharging thing there where, you know, we set our phones down. I, I'm not really sure what, what, what was happening in that part. It was, he, I, he, he stopped on a he, he stopped on a MagSafe charger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of wondering what was going on, but I mean, clearly he was conserving power. He knew that it was going to take a while. He he told the androids to build Mando a bed so that he could take a nap too. So clearly, a significant amount of time passed there. That's but true. if you guys can, I want you guys to talk about like just the you know once we saw Luke. I mean, we spent more time with Luke here than obviously in end of Mandalorian season two, and. I, 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 I even really, last, I really didn't the think. Last Jedi. I really, I, yeah, Scott. I mean, out, out of the whole sequel trilogy, we spent more time with Luke. I feel like here, a uh, quality time, Pete. Like, like this is this is what we've wanted to see since like 1983. Like, and I got to tell you, man. The, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you guys. You guys talk, talk about the whole like training everything, like all of it. Oh well, we can get into that, but I just want to talk about the technical aspects, like, you know. We, it was heavily discussed when Luke made his appearance at the end of season two. Um, there was that uncanny Valley uh, with Luke. Oh, this this was so incredible. Like the visuals on this were really, really it, good. This, it was, yeah, it was, it was a huge improvement over the end of season two. And, and I did read, I guess they, they used a different stand in uh, for Luke Skywalker, a different actor. Did they? Um, but man, I don't know what they did in the last year. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, that that twelve month gap uh, in technology just really jumped because well, I think it, I read it, it or looked heard somewhere that they crazy how good it was. They contracted with somebody who does deep fakes on the internet, um, and they had been working with him. But I think they didn't have him on board in time to work on Luke's appearance in Mandalorian. So you would assume that whatever it was that he contributed whatever he brought to the table. I mean, that's, that's what the difference is. The audio on the other hand was weird. I mean, I know that Mark Hamill got in the sound booth and he's the one who did the ADR. That was clearly his voice, but there was something that they did to make it sound younger. That just didn't seem right. I don't, it didn't it, seem it, it made it softer yeah, because they, his voice has changed over the years. Yeah. But also so. it just, it didn't, it didn't sound, you know what it was at, for me, right? When you record a film, um, the sound guy always asks everybody to hold for tone when you get done shooting and you're done with the scene, it's like hold for tone and everybody is supposed to just be quiet. And they literally record the noises that the room makes. And then they lay that under so that it doesn't sound like a sterile environment, especially if they need to bring the actors in to do ADR, right? Because they missed a line or whatever. And that's what it sounded like. It sounded like Mark Hamill had gone into a sound booth and they forgot to add tone underneath it because everything else was happening, right? All the other background noise and the and the soundtrack and everything, they all blended together, but it sounded like Luke's dialogue had been laid over the top of it and had been integrated into it. It just sounded sounded off. And it maybe it maybe well, it sounded like a, that like in like animate home. like No, that could have been. Who, who talks uh, it sounded who to me. It, it, it sounded like animation. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like where you watch like an animated film and it's different. You know, you can you can pinpoint kind of where the in a live action you can kind of see where the like you said. There's that ambient like background noise in animation. They don't have that. Uh, they have to build it from a sound booth, and that's kind of how Luke <laughs> he sounded like it was like almost like an animated film coupled with live action in addition to it. So, but yeah, minor it gripe. I, and it didn't he, matter he where the fantastic. location was, but you're right. It's a minor gripe because I mean, we finally got to see Luke training somebody in how to use the force. And that was just, I mean, well, I me, think they, I think they drowned it out a lot Pete, it, in the music, right? It, like, like when, it, when he's talking, they, the music is I yeah, think higher they tried to, yeah. I mean, but I say that they did a much better job of making him believable as being Mark Hamill, the character on screen. Visually, right? yes, Yo, absolutely. I mean, I mean, <laughs> just leaps and bounds. And that's technology. And like, <clears throat> you know, we go back to Rogue One and Princess sure. Leia criticism and Moff Tarkin, you know, people had issues with the eyes and everything. Like, my God, folks, let's <laughs> let's give people a break here. I mean, this is all new technology. I mean, these, yeah. they're all on the uh, cutting edge of, of making this stuff look real. Like, in, as humans, we recognize human faces and expressions and, every every nuance you can possibly imagine like we can pick out a fake person uh 
you know, pretty easy, you know, so it's going to take time, but my gosh, I mean, how far have they gotten with this in such a short amount of time? Luke looked great in this episode. He really did. Yeah. And I want to go right to the end. Cause I know we're, we're getting, you know, we're getting close to an hour here, guys. I mean, like I, I gotta tell you, um, <clears throat> as many great things happen in this episode, as much as they threw at us, I was, I was, I was surprised to see Ahsoka show up in this episode. I, I didn't mm-hmm. know if I really needed her there, but she was there, you know, talked Mando uh, out I of, was, I was kind of let down, honestly. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I'm let down by your being let down. Other than to say, go ahead. Like, Hey, this character still exists. Yeah. What you want <laughs> well, her like, dead? She didn't serve a purpose. Huh? What you want her dead? No, I, I, no, 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 no. I just felt like we were kind of robbed of her and Luke meeting for the first time, which maybe they'll do that in her show or they'll do a flashback or whatever, but it just kind of felt like, man, like that's a huge moment, you know, like, yeah, she's meeting the the son of her former master and it's kind of like, so I just felt like they kind of glazed, they kind of glazed over that. Yeah, I'm, I, I get what you're saying. Like, uh, look, Luke. You know the whole the whole story of Luke and and his father. Like your apprentice, hit, like Anakin's apprentice is is here. Like it should be a more significant moment, right? She's sharing memories of and teachings of what uh, Anakin taught her when he was a Jedi right, before he turned. And now we're just getting this stare, this awkward stare. We'll ever see you again? Um, yeah, it's. Yeah, I don't know, Pete. What do you think? Like, I, well, we, we we've so always we've always of thought that, of this, right? It, we knew Ahsoka survived. We knew she was she right. lived beyond a certain point. We always thought, like, if she ever had a conversation with Luke, would she ever share memories <clears throat> and teachings of Anakin? You know, the things that Luke didn't get from his father. But this is his father's apprentice. She spent so much time with him. She had to be attached to the hip with him. Uh, but I wonder if 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 it's that attachment that that is keeping her from more fully exploring it. And, and you're absolutely right. I mean, you nailed it. I, I wondered what she meant. And my son said it too. Like, and, and I think everybody's picking up on it. What the hell did she mean when she said so much like your father? Right. Is that a good thing? Is that a yeah. bad thing? What did but she mean? I love because, this, but that's one of the things we wanted to hear though. Right. Like sure. Ahsoka talking to Luke, you know, just yeah. seeing him look off in the distance, like you remind me so much of your father, or you, you, you're, you're, you're teaching this way. You're, you remind me so much of your father. Like we wanted to see that, and I want to, I want to hear so much more of that conversation between her and Luke about what he taught her, what they went through, like because he's missing so much context of of his father, the story, yeah. and and Ahsoka has so much of it right there. I you think know? what Ahsoka. Uh is Anakin didn't know if Ahsoka's heart was in it. I think she was talking about herself. I think she was talking about Anakin wasn't sure about Ahsoka at the beginning. And just like uh, Luke wasn't about Grogu. I think that's what it was. And I get what you're saying about, um, you know, Ahsoka sharing things, you know, I guess like memories and stuff. Maybe like old, like training things or videos or something that she could have on some whatever but also i don't think she'd be like here here's this training video of your dad you, you <laughs> totally need training here's this typo you know, video your I, dad. I, I, if i was luke i would be pretty offended <laughs> if, no. if someone was like here's a training video of your dad I'd be like, yeah. yeah your dad used to, that. your dad used that, to sell you, yeah your dad used to sell shake weights here you go um <laughs> you know the, the, it, it's all it's all uncomfortable and stressful pete you know what else is stressful uh, being on a podcast with three other guys who are also divorced. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> that, that's pretty bad. Uh, the other thing is bad is when even when you're divorced, you have to get a car. Saturated market. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you have to buy a car, and that's why we all know that's stressful. But it doesn't have to be. The Street Motors, located in Pacific Missouri, will help you find the vehicle <laughs> you need, no matter what brand. The Street Motors giving you the best price on a pre-owned vehicle. They'll fit your budget. Give Brandon or Don a call today at 573-259-1306 and tell them Gateway City Sports and a bunch of divorce guys sent you. 
And that'll fit your budget both pre and post divorce, right, Ron? I don't know. My son's on here, so he might have something to say about that. Braden, don't. Nobody said it was going to be the same car on on those budgets, but it could fit your needs. Oh. This money well spent, guys. Thank you, Fifth Street Motors. He, all he's asking is, hey, Dad, this, this Street Motors ad, what kind of car are you going to get me when I graduate? That's what he's thinking right now. Yeah, I'll hit up uh, the guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, I tell you Before what. Before uh, we lose track of this, <clears throat> I just have to point out, like, how awesome is it? The mirror, like the parallel of Luke with Yoda on his back being trained, mm-hmm. and now he's training a small creature, same species, on his back. I think that's and, pretty and cool. It looks like in the same backpack, too. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it really does. And, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm, like, actually, like, <clears throat> what if, I mean, I, I want to know, I want to know those, those, the min- minutia scenes of, like, Luke being, like, oh, shit. Oh, I gotta go back to Dagobah and get that freaking backpack. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then him being, like, god damn it, where'd he put that thing at? <laughs> Such well, a pain, at some such point, a pain you in the think ass. He had yeah. to because of the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you know, I, I got to tell you guys because, I, and I think that this is going to end up ultimately being the the larger lesson of it, right? Because attachment came up a lot, um, and I know that some people were um, a little put off by it, like that Luke had not learned the entire lesson, right? He's warning Grogu against attachment and everything. But that was the lesson of Luke, right? Was it was his attachments to his friends. It was his attachment to his father that saved the galaxy. Um, but I was watching the show tonight with my son. And uh, and as we're watching Grogu making the choice, he said, oh, I'd take the lightsaber. I was like, really? You would? He's like, yeah, I get to be a Jedi. I said, you realize that means that you would never get to see me again. And he stopped and he turned and he looked at me. It was like, oh, oh, yeah, the Mandalorian is his dad. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, that choice wasn't so easy for him. Yeah. And I kind of wonder, I kind of wonder if that isn't going to be the, the bigger lesson here, right? Is that, is that maybe the Jedi weren't always right? Uh, and that's partly what led to their downfall is attachments are okay for a Jedi. But you need to first learn how to put away those attachments before you can pick them back up again. And that that's what Luke had to learn. And that's what Anakin never learned. Anakin never learned to put those attachments away. He held on to them until it ultimately consumed him and brought him over to the dark side. Yeah. Yeah. So the, maybe that's what, so, and, and you know, maybe that's the, the, maybe that's the best of both worlds women. where Grogu puts aside those attachments mm-hmm. or, or he embraces those attachments. He goes off and he adventures with, with, with Din. Well, and then eventually, <clears throat> He comes back and he becomes a Jedi. Well, and everybody, uh, this choice was put in front of him, right? And and obviously, we know in the sequel trilogies, like there's no Grogu, Grogu to be seen. So, um, we all assume that he chose the Mandalorian, right? He chose the shirt. Um, maybe, maybe not, but um, yeah, um, it's it's not an easy choice. I mean, think about it. Like he, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I want to choose for him. Like, I, I, like all of us want to choose for him. Like we want, we want him to follow Luke. Some of us want him to uh, go back to the Mandalorian. Cause that's been the, the not the Disney moneymaker. It's not how we're thinking about it, but it's like, that's the emotional like attachment we have. Like we all understand how, you know, Din Djarin, uh, you know, found this young child and it feels like a father figure. And, can't let go so much that he goes back and visits after he's fulfilled his obligation to return him to his kind. So it's hard. It's hard, man. We've all been there. We've all had to make this kind of choice. Are you crying, Scott? I don't want him to go with. Hold on. No, I'm getting pretty choked up. Are you crying? God damn it. (laughs) Oh God. Um, You want him to go with the Mandalorian, Braden? All right, guys. No, I think, I think the important thing is, is Braden, if this choice was you, uh, are you picking the shirt or the lightsaber? Oh, if it was Brayden, he's picking the lightsaber. Yeah. You want to spend the rest of your life with um, your brother? Absolutely. He's like, he's like, Dad, I'm That's out. That's easy. Sure. 
Uh, guys, uh, uh, we, we got to wrap it up here. We, we got to wrap on, it up whoa, here. No, whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. Hold on. No, I want to go Give back. Me two no. minutes. No, no, no. Because you forgot one of the most important right, things in the entire episode. All right, so hold on. Let me get my Luke stuff out of the way real quick, and then I'll go into right. something you, right, I guess, go complete. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But do it quick. Do but, it quick, dude. Uh, okay, running so basically, look at, I want I want Grogu to pick the shirt um, because if the sequels are in the Filoni Dave universe or whatever, I mean, what's going to happen to Grogu with the whole, you know, Kylo Ren thing, and will he actually ever be fully trained with that? Who knows? Um he could end up getting being like a Mandalorian Jedi anyway, maybe. Um, but you guys also forgot about Cad Bane. How sick no, was that? No, uh, no, 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 no. I was get. I was going to go there. I was going to go there. Like you next. Just say we gotta wrap it up. I know, but that's what Cad I was Bane. saving to the end, man. Don't jump the gun. <laughs> we well wrap it up usually means outro. We're done. No, but we no, got no, 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 no. Let's let's go. Starting it right now. All right, uh, Pete. Uh, this is if there was one thing that I, I have gone back and watched the most in this episode that happened just like yesterday. I have went back and watched the Cad Bane scene yes. at least a half a dozen times. It was so good, uh, so goddamn good, all of it. I mean, and, and, and I just want to say this real quick, and then Ron, you can take it over, but. I always thought it when I was watching him on Clone Wars. I was like, that guy is like Cad Bane is so inspired by Clint Eastwood. Mm -hmm. Clint yeah, Eastwood's yeah. man with no name. Totally, totally. But then when you saw him on the horizon in here, it all came to fruition. Like it, it all culminated in that moment. Him just walking in out of the desert, tall, skinny guy, long coat, flat brimmed hat. Mm -hmm. It was the alien Clint Eastwood. I was so goddamn happy. It was, it was, it was so good. It was one of the best. And I tell you what, guys, one of the, the best only thing that they missed was the toothpick. Yes. Yep. I, I totally agree, Elliot, but with those teeth and a real human actor. Yeah. Maybe a little difficult. Was, but I know that there, there was one thing that was missing, and I know that it was Corey Burton. And and I'm I'd be curious to find out why they did, but there was a there was a serpentine element to Corey Burton's portrayal in the uh in the Clone Wars where it, where there was more of a uh, more of a hiss to yeah. his voice. And that was absolutely missing in here. That was not here. But that's doesn't Nitpicking. matter. That was Doesn't matter. So unbelievably minor. They they absolutely nailed it. Well, especially so especially when he's confronting a established actor in in the universe as Timothy Timothy Oliphant. Like Timothy Oliphant at the beginning of this episode was a gunslinger and took down three of four pikes and let the other one go right. for for a statement. And at the end here, uh, to, towards the end here, um, you saw and when I saw. A figure in the desert i thought oh shit is this this female tuscan initially I'm like she's showing back up he told the other people to go back in and as, as, as he got closer i'm like saw the rim of the hat i'm like oh fuck really is they... i started i started tapping my son on the leg i was like cat bane cat bane i know i know I did, Dad, I, you should get that looked at yeah and i didn't have anybody <laughs> around so me excited. i didn't it was early morning i didn't have anybody around me it was afternoon it was late, late at night Braden saw it before i did and he was i was telling him don't spoil it for me but I saw it in my my, my leg. <laughs> my leg was tapping. I'm like, oh shit! It's Cad Bane. It's Cad Bane. You know, and it's a it's an animated character. Like I didn't care much about about him before. I knew he played a significant role in the Clone Wars. Cool character, bounty hunter, ruthless, whatever. Like a dime a dozen in the Star Wars universe, right? When you see him in live action, all of a sudden, like, wow, they did such a great job introducing him, walking in from the desert, like you know the heat waves. Like you can't really make out his yeah. face because the heat waves are happening and all of a sudden when he says Cobb Vanth I'm like oh shit this is great I, it was my, one of my favorite scenes <clears throat> in anything they've done post Disney by far and, and you know what Ron and this was something that we talked with Elle about on mm -hmm. Sunday if you know nothing about Cad Bane still a after cool this scene episode, at, right after this episode you know this is not a guy to be messed with yeah and to her in, in that and to her point three minutes yeah, that was a great introduction and to her point yeah. pete like they don't if they don't know who he was but they saw him here oh i have disney plus so i have clone wars and i can watch shit about cad bane maybe it, it, and it also it yep. it gets me excited for the introduction of other characters from the animated series 
So well, it's Filoni. He's getting everybody. He's he's yes. going to get everybody from the Clone Wars that's significant. He's going to get them in. I'm waiting for Hondo, a live action appearance oh, of yes, Hondo and Naka. Just, just drop off that dough because he's coming next week. Although they pulled it off IMDb, but it was there long enough. I should I, I, I put it on the Twitter. You guys saw it. Pete, he's coming, man. We're gonna see. We're gonna see the old I, grumpy. Like, get ready, <sighs> Chewy. Uh, I don't think Cad Bane, though. I don't think he's working with the Pikes. I think uh, oh, somebody. No, he, oh yeah, he's yeah, yeah he's got my thing going on. But I, I hope we get a Boba uh, Cad Bane rematch next week because uh, I don't well, know the one we never saw in the Clone Wars, right? Well, yeah, and, yeah and we that's never what saw I was it. Alluding to earlier, I think yeah. we absolutely get a Boba Fett Cad Bane, and and this is this is how I think Boba Fett ends up with the dark saber. Cad yeah, I think Bane you're right, Pete. Yeah, defeats it, defeats the Mandalorian. Din Djarin does and not then want Boba that. Boba Fett thing. defeats Cad Bane, and because of that, he's able to pick up the dark saber and wield it by Creed because he defeated the one who defeated the Mandalorian. Right. Yeah. And Din Djarin I, has I, never I, wanted I, anything to do with that goddamn yeah. saber anyway. It's like nope. a it's like a bane of his existence. A Cad Bane. Yeah, it's a, curse. a Cad Bane of his existence. There you go. That's right. I just can't wait to see how they work, uh, how Robert Rodriguez and Favreau and Filoni work in Hans. All right, any final thoughts, Scott, before we kick you off this show? Okay, very good. Uh, Sports ball! Very good, very good. He has nothing left to say. Pete, get us out of here. Like, oh, wait, before I get us out of here, let's throw it to Elliot. He's sitting there with his arms crossed. He's got ah, figure Christ. skating on in the background. You know that he's just dying to turn and watch it. Yes, I've seen it all <laughs> night long, Elliot. What about curling? Uh, I don't think that it's that uh, this that early. Was on the other day. Oh. What has has have the Olympics started? Yes. Oh, okay. I don't care. Elliot, <laughs> your final thoughts on uh, on this week's episode I, of the Book of Boba Fett, not of this podcast, because we know what this. Shit <laughs> Honestly, is I, I think that the, the Cad Bane scene was probably my favorite scene in the in the the last episode. Um, Super excited to see how this decision affects everything moving forward with maybe getting more Luke or not, because uh, that's got to be an expensive thing to do with the, the facial recognition and uh, the deep fake. So, but ever, ever since the, we got more Luke in battlefield Two, this, this one, this last episode reminded me a lot of that and how Luke we're, we're finally seeing Jedi Luke the way that everybody has been clamoring for, for years. So fantastic. We got, and we got it at the end of uh, Mandalorian uh, season two, right? Like we got the, we got to see the Luke fight and we got to see the Luke. We always wanted to see, but now we're getting bonus Luke. Yes. Which none of us needed. But we got, and I'm 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 thankful for it. And it it did a much better job of the de aging, the uh, voice, uh, the in, deep in, fake. In, yeah, yeah, and deep fake. And at Pete's point, I think I think they tried to mask it a little bit with the music and the score that was going on at the time. But you know what? That's like, what are we complaining about? Like, it's gonna get. We all know that it's gonna get better, right? Yep. We saw Jurassic yep. Park in 1994. Imagine what they could do now. Like it's all going to get better. It's all going to get way better. And so, yeah, I mean, look at how far they came in a year. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so just, just imagine what Luke's going to look like in season three of the Mandalorian. I don't can't wait. Can't wait. If you enjoyed either. this episode. Right. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to help spread the word, please give us a five star review and tell your friends to subscribe. We're available on Rumble, Facebook, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Also, be sure to check out the other Gateway City Sports Network podcasts, including the Derek King Sports Show, Two for Three with Moose Michaels, Yacker Jacks, XFL, STL, and and the Cards with A Train Arlington Lane. You can find Scott on Twitter at. What was it again? Sports ball exclamation point. You're on mute. Scott. You're, you're muted, son. That's all right. Okay, good. He said, oh, there it is. Snuddy987. Yeah. <laughs> you can send us an email at the show at teamarrivalspodcast.com. You can find Elliot on Twitter at. T-O-R underscore Elliot. 
And you can find Ron for fuck nine more days on Twitter. At- yeah. Yeah. My, my, my time is winding down. I'm, I'm actually kind of nervous now. You can find me at uh, T O R underscore Ron seven five, but I tell you what, if it goes, if it goes to two thirteen, this labor dispute is not uh, settled. Um, I'm deactivating the Twitter account and you only find me at, uh, at T O R what team arrivals pod. Team arrivals pod. That's it. Check it out. Not All sure right, I'll gentlemen. care. We'll see you guys uh, next week. We'll talk some more about, uh, well, the l- complete lack of progress for Major League Baseball. And uh, we can geek out for, for uh, episode seven, final episode of the Book of Boba Fett, at least of this season of the Book of Boba Fett, mm-hmm. and start looking forward to Kenobi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, you got, we're going to have some Star Trek to hold this over until then. I'm sorry, what? Star Trek. Star Trek. Picard. Yeah, we're not listening. Huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. Hey, got to go full nerd. That's right. You know, you never go full nerd. <laughs> oh, God. Not touching it. All right, guys. Uh, love you all so much. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye, everyone. Uh, I finally topped the crowd. <laughs>